<laughs> nice callback. <laughs> Oh, shoot. That's right. That's right. Welcome back, super friends and super family. I'm Nick, and today I'm reacting to Friends Season 4, Episodes 11 and 12. I thought the last two episodes are really strong. I mean, kind of continuing the trend of the season. Strong writing, strong, funny, kind of different comedic situations. Like I said, it was Christmas or Christmas time, the last episode. I'd, I'd love, I love Christmas. Christmas time is a great time of year, and the holiday episodes of Friends also seem particularly strong. So I kind of hope that these next two episodes, it's still Christmas time. We haven't gotten past that already, but we'll see what happens. I'm hoping Monica is doing well at the restaurant now that people finally fear and respect her, and uh, Chandler and Kathy. I would love to see the two of them because I think they have great chemistry and I'm, I'm really rooting for their relationship, even though I don't know if I'm hopeful for how things will go for them long term. But as always, if you want to watch along the full unedited reaction or future reactions of the show and support the channel, that is all up on Patreon. The link to that is in the description down below. For now, let's get into today's reaction. Friends, Season 4, Episodes 11 and 12. <laughs> They are? You know, we're here, we're having lunch. Let's get married, right? <laughs> uh, I think she's taking advantage. <laughs> when your grandma is your sister. And they're just like teenagers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, things have not changed. Things have not changed between the two of them, but we are in public. Is there anything you need? Uh, yeah. Life insurance? Sorry. You know, no one's getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good laugh from her. They take my sperm, her egg, put it into another girl. So we were wondering if you could be the girl that we could put it into. Uh, no. I was thinking of like a gravy boat. <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna ask for next? Her kidney? I mean, there's. Do I even want to dive into breaking that down, how strange this whole situation is? I don't. I don't. But I mean, is that marriage really gonna last? I mean, it's so strange, it actually might. In this show, you know what I mean? You guys, check it out, check it out. Guess what job I just got? What? Who lays her back? He, he wants it back. <laughs> he almost got it. Why would he want his blue blazer black? <laughs> She's not gonna let it go. You know what I meant. No, well, you messed it up. Yes, yes. You're stupid. <laughs> Hold him accountable. Tour guide at the museum. Yeah, Ross got it for me. Well, how can you be a tour Oh, nice. It's like memorizing a script. And on your left, you have Tyrannosaurus Rex, a carnivore from the Jurassic period. He's done his homework. Yeah, actually, Julie, it's the Cretaceous period. <laughs> oh, Ross is gonna correct every fact. Guess what? What? Junior and Alice got married. Oh, this news. They want me to grow it for them in my uterus. <laughs> <laughs> the response is very different this time. You really thinking of having sex with your brother? <laughs> This is a new spin on the Oedipus tale. Her egg and his sperm and I'm, I'm just the oven. It's totally their bun. Oh. Is Phoebe really going ahead with this? I'm gonna be giving someone the greatest gift you can possibly give. Dang. And get them a Sony PlayStation? <laughs> <laughs> really is an incredible thing to do for them, but there are things to think about. Yeah, right? I mean, pregnant. I know. <laughs> Where's the pillow from 10 Things I Hate About You? Have Phoebe carry that around. Morning sickness, labor, and it's all for somebody else. Yeah, what's your point? <laughs> I mean, Phoebe is so selfless, that's pretty crazy. First time I had a baby, it would be with someone I love, and that baby was, you know, a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> And I wanted to make denim furniture. Well, it's a little bit of a different choice. Honey, maybe you can talk to somebody who's had a baby. Like your mom. My mom never gave birth. Oh! What? But my birth mom did. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, the two of them. Take it to work with me? Why not? It's not mine anyway. Came with the pants. Oh. <laughs> He's leasing it out. Chandler, you're so happy, man. You guys are really just right there, aren't you? Yes. Right where? In a good place, right? Sex and talking and sex and talking and... It is a good state. Gotta love the talking. <laughs> and the sex? Alright, we haven't had sex yet. Oh, really? And I want our love to grow before we move on to the next level. That is so nice. That is really nice. Lying! <laughs> Just because you're not mature enough to understand something like that? No, he's right. I'm totally lying. <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice callback. And you're afraid you won't be able to fill his shoes. Oh, oh. No, I'm afraid I won't be able to make love as well as him. I mean... I was going for the metaphor. Yes, and I was saying the actual words. <laughs> Joey's had a lot of girlfriends. It doesn't mean that he's great in bed. We share a wall. Ah, uh, okay, okay. She just liked to agree with him a lot. <laughs> with you, it's gonna be different. You, you guys are in love. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't overthink it. Yeah, come on. All right, I'll sleep with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing it for you guys. <laughs> okay, now the mastodon. Oh, how is this gonna go? Is it the mastodon from the Pliocene epic? There's always that one kid. There's always that. Over here, we have Ross Geller. Ross is one of our most important scientists. Look at him. Ross is loving this. Ross is loving this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> None of the kids like that. <laughs> it's open. Come in. Oh, how is this going to go? It combines my two passions, pottery and erotica. Oh, erotery. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Not bad. I just thought it would be a very good idea to talk about this baby stuff in person, you know? Okay. What is she gonna advise her to do? Um, oh no, no, I understand the pain. Don't, don't hurt the puppy. No, 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 she's not gonna hurt it. She's gonna give you the puppy. Oh, I get a puppy? For only three days. Why? <laughs> so she can teach you a lesson. Uh, <laughs> oh, Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe, would you please look at me and not the puppy? It's very important. <laughs> Hard to focus. I just think that it would be something that you would regret every single day for the rest of your life. I could see that. I really shouldn't have given you the puppy first. I... <laughs> <laughs> only the people in the white coat sit over there, and only the people in the blue blazers sit over here. Oh, Ross being a little elitist? Okay. You not in a perfect world. You in a museum now. <laughs> Peter! Hey, Peter! <laughs> I like her. From PS129. You man, <laughs> I gave you my snack pack. <laughs> he pretend he don't even hear me. <laughs> I think everybody's pretending they don't hear you. <laughs> Ross is one of my best friends, and if I save him a seat, I'm telling you, he no, will sit in. No, he's not going to. Ross, he loves the status here. I saved you a seat. I'm cool over here. I'll catch up with you later, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Point proven. Saved. <laughs> Gift shop. <laughs> Is it actually like that working at a museum? I'd never have worked there. I'd love to know. No, hey, it's not just me. I mean, the scientists and the tour guides never sit together. Ross, you're not a scientist, are you? The waiters eat with the waiters. Chefs eat with the other chefs, right? I eat by myself because everybody hates me. <gasps> oh, oh. You know, hey, I understand. Hey, and you're in the audience. I don't talk to you, right? That's not the same. Come on, Ross. I'll see you tomorrow. Poor Joey, man. We're in the audience. He doesn't talk to us, but he does wave. <laughs> Hi. What? What happened, Chandler? Did it go badly? Singing to Carl Malden. To who? Come on, let's go to the balcony. The street. Come on, let's go to the street. <laughs> They go to the balcony? Balcony until after I get back. <laughs> oh, Phoebe. Oh, Phoebe, don't do that, please. Did you do it? Yes, yes, we had the sex. He's so bummed. It went that bad? She didn't agree with me as strongly as she agreed with Joey. Oh, Chandler. Ah, oh, just... Oh, I see your point. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time. Not always a lot of agreement. Not for girls, anyway. Guys agree like that. <laughs> Look, you have to True. help me. What makes it go from nice to, my God, somebody's killing her in there. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you don't have to draw an actual, wo whoa, she's hot. <laughs> Five, six, and seven. There are seven. <laughs> That's one? <laughs> kind of an important one. Which one? Which one? I want to see the drawing. Well, you know, sometimes that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> One, two, three, and then go to seven and set up camp. <laughs> if you go to Disneyland, you don't spend the whole day on the Matterhorn. Or anything like seven. That's true. You gotta keep them on their toes. No toes! For some people, right? Yeah, 
For some people. <laughs> okay, exactly. <laughs> For Tarantino, yes. A one, two, three, a five, <laughs> a four, a three, two, two, a two, four, six, two, four, two, two, okay, four, seven. Okay, she's really visualizing. Seven, six, seven, 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 seven. She knew exactly what to imagine, man. I'm having my lunch right here with my good friend Joey. Does Joey want to move at this point? Okay. I will sit with you, Dr. Geller. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to change the whole, you know, dynamic of the workplace? There is something unnatural. <laughs> now, I look around this cafeteria and you know what I see? I see, I see division. Tell me he rehearsed this. Tell me. White coats and blue blazers. And I ask myself, my God, why? <laughs> and we get to know the people underneath. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm divorced and I have a kid. It's like an AA meeting now. <laughs> I don't know squat about dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm Ted and I just moved here a month ago and New York really scares me. I'm Andrew, and I didn't pay for this pair. That's okay. I'm Rhonda, and these aren't real. <laughs> I'm Scott. Yeah, okay, Scott. And I need to flip the light switch on and off 17 times before I leave. <laughs> I can't do this. I can't give him up. Yes, no, I can. I don't want to. That'd be hard, right? Maybe just learn the lesson, but keep the dog. That's what I say, Phoebe. No one ever saw that. Oh, it was only okay. <laughs> I know what Sylvia's choice is. My mom was right. If I can't, if I can't give him up, then there's no way I can give up a little baby. I think she's right, to be honest. Judy oh. reminds me of my old dog, Tumor. Oh, oh. You oh, are dude. so precious, I could just take you home. Oh, is she going to give them the dog? Are you serious? Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna feel like a million times better, right? I mean, maybe. I wanna carry your baby. Okay, wow. Oh my God, I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> that is so, I mean, that is such a sacrifice for Phoebe. I, I gave them the puppy and it made them so happy that I decided I'm gonna carry their baby. <laughs> Her plan backfired. And I know that I am not gonna regret this. Oh, I, I understand all that. It's just, that was my puppy. Oh. oh, shoot. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Would you ever be a surrogate for anyone? You're not asking me, are you? No. Yes. Not right now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's a great way to close it. That is a great way to close the episode. <laughs> what the hell is that? Is that you? No. <laughs> oh. Boy, you are really not a morning this person. Back off! <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> that is some good bed hair. Noise. You. Yeah, I don't think that's there. Someone has a rooster, though. She's becoming a rooster. That is not okay. Getting a second opinion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, oh, what do you do now, man? I didn't think that was theirs, actually. I thought it was uh, gonna be a twist. It was someone else's. You really should get rid of those animals. They shouldn't be living in an apartment. Yeah, I don't know if it's the best home for them, to be honest. Go to the fertility doctor and uh, see if I'm ready to have Frank and Alice's embryo transferred into my uterus. <laughs> She's so excited. I'm happy for Phoebe, honestly. Good luck. And I'm still right. About what? Today's her laundry day, and that means she's wearing her old lady underpants. <laughs> Is it true? Chandler's just like, I could check everything. You and Chandler know me and Rachel better than we know you. We, we do. Actually, I don't know. Who knows who better? I believe if you check Rachel's bag, you will find a half-eaten box of cookies in there. Is it half-eaten? You're good. <laughs> These are not. What is it? Devil's food something? Snacks when they shop. Oh, yeah? Is that true? Okay. Ten bucks says that we can name every item 
in that bag. That would be pretty good. Deal. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'll be impressed if Joey and Chandler can get this. We'll be starting with apples. <laughs> Ross is having a blast, man. Stop that now. <laughs> I say continue, but okay. Yogurt. Diet soda. Yes, yes, yes. Dang, dang, pretty good. No, there's no orange juice in there. We win. <laughs> no, they have one wrong guess. Okay, well, we won that one. <laughs> what else? Another juice? Cranberry juice? Milk. Oh, oh. No, not for like another two weeks. Is that what I think it is? Is that what I think it is? Scotch tape. Wow. Wow. Out of left field, I would not have guessed that. Nice. All right. Ten bucks. Fork it over. Cough it up. I mean, they earned Pay that. Pay the piper. <laughs> Real personal question. And the winner gets a hundred bucks. Serious? Oh, you scared? I kind of like this game. Ross will do it. Oh, sure, Ross will do it. <laughs> Job or a child or a life of his own. <laughs> Baby! No, 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 I, I want to play. Come on, you want to be involved, bro. <laughs> I bet the apartment. I would never bet this apartment. It's too nice. <laughs> How do you feel? Well, freaked. Really? I mean, they are, like, literally putting all their eggs in my basket. <laughs> yeah, but I bet it works. Really? How much? Oh, oh, Monica, no, 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 it's not gonna happen. Well, the doctor says it takes a couple days, but I mean, my body's always been a little faster than Western medicine, so. <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe you guys actually think you're moving in here. They are. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not moving. What? I mean, a deal is a deal. You bet in a bet, and if you lose, you lose the bet. I mean, if we had lost, we would have made them get rid of the birds, right? No. Oh, come on, yes. If it makes you feel any better, this is all your fault. What do you mean? Chanandler Bong. Come on, we steal that TV guide every week. Oh, come on. No, no, no. Well, nope, not knocked up yet. TV, relax, relax. I'm gonna, you know, lie in your chair. You know? Does that have any effect at all? You know, do its jobs. <laughs> Put that box down. We are not going anywhere. And what are you gonna do? That is a boy's apartment. It's dirty and it's I am not moving, and now I have got the steady hand. <laughs> Is that steady? That's right. You do what the hand says. <laughs> How are they going to convince them not to? What can they do? <laughs> what an image. In nine months, will you come greet us? She's inspired for new music. Buy you some Adidas. <laughs> Don't mix those up. You could really ruin that lollipop. <laughs> Uh. There's only one question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I will. Try not to put all your hopes on this. Okay. They're really building up the suspense for this. I mean, they want a kid so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's a great entrance. You don't get mad at us. No one forced you to raise the stakes. That is not true. She did. She forced she me. Pressure, dude, and force you. Stupid. Question. Don't blame the question. Yeah. Stop yelling in our apartment. You are ruining moving day for us. <laughs> you guys, you're gonna have a baby. They're gonna have a baby. Oh dang, dang. Okay. My sister's gonna have my baby. <laughs> Not a phrase you'd normally say with joy, but. Oh, okay, but this can't be good for the baby. Oh. Yeah, some space, some space. <laughs> It fixed all their problems, but are they really losing their apartment? I'm curious. <laughs> what? I can only imagine what's in there. I can't believe we're living here. They actually are moving. Wow. <laughs> what? What, what, what is it? Did you see the size of the closets? <laughs> I can't believe we live here. I can't believe they can't uh, live here too. I would love that upgrade, man. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 
what a victory. Wow. All right, so that is Friends, Season 4, Episodes 11 and 12. Two really, really good episodes, especially episode. I thought Episode 12 was great. One of the a top-tier episode, easily for me. But in Episode 11, you know, we kind of had the, the start of that storyline with Phoebe, you know, being the surrogate mother to her brother and his wife. And that storyline went a direction I didn't think it was going to go. Just I honestly thought that, um, you know, Phoebe was going to take her mother's advice and not want to carry someone else's baby, you know. And I, I like the way that that storyline developed for a few reasons. So all the friends and even her mother were smart to kind of tell Phoebe like, hey, you really want to think about this. There are a number of reasons why you might not want to do this big life decision and this very serious and very big commitment, right? But it was cool not only how it ended up, you know, because at the end of the day, I think it's something that, you know, people can advise you on, but only you really know what you want to do in that situation, right? So I like how that decision ultimately was something that Phoebe made for herself, right? And she thought about it for a while too. She reflected, she took that advice, she spent the time with the puppy, but then seeing the joy on her brother and his wife's face, you know, that's the thing that convinced her that no, she wanted to do this. It would be a sacrifice to give up a baby that she carried, but she loves giving joy to people like that. And that is so true to Phoebe and who she is. But I, I like not only how, you know, the storyline took that turn, which I didn't expect, and how that's why Phoebe decided to do something like that. But on top of that, I like how supportive, like even, you know, the rest of the friends and her mother who initially were like, uh, maybe slow down and really think about this. When Phoebe did make that decision for herself, they were, they're very supportive of it, right? They're like, look, you thought it through. This is why you want to do it. You know you want to do it. Okay. And part of me was kind of hoping that Phoebe would get a dog to keep just so we'd have a dog show up in the show, but that's okay. That's just a small side. Now, I wouldn't mind if one of the characters got a dog and it's just like, we have a cute, cool dog who's like hanging out as a recurring animal that we see beyond, you know, Chandler and Joey's current pets. And then we have Joey now working at the museum with Ross. And I don't know if that's going to be something we see more of. I wouldn't mind that because that's, you know, just something different for Joey's career. I mean, obviously he's an actor, but work is oftentimes inconsistent. So, you know, him working with Ross and giving tours, that could be, they could play with that storyline or that career choice, not career choice, but that job for Joey a little bit. But I, I thought it was a pretty amusing scenario where they have the differences of the workplace and Ross stands up and gives an epic speech about how he wants them all to rise above their differences. And next thing you know, everyone is opening up and, and sharing possibly oversharing at the workplace, but sharing and hopefully things moving forward at the museum. We're more fair and open. I will say that they're, I think they're having work jobs or is like different positions. I definitely think there can be that separation. Although at least in my experience, it was very organic. Like when I was bartending, you know, I would spend more time on my break with my bartenders, but not because there was any separation between the waiters and I and us and vice versa. But it was more that we're just closer friends because we're working together and talking and hanging out all the time. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, the waiter's over there, the bartender's over there. And even similar with the, some of the stuff like front of the house, back of the house. But I am curious because I'm sure there are some jobs, you know, and I wonder if it's like that in museums. Like, is there that separation where it's like, oh, no, no, you do not sit with them. We are over here and we are over there. Because in general, I feel like that's pretty silly, but maybe that's just the reality for a lot of people working those types of jobs. I'm not too sure. But episode 12, man, that was just an excellent episode. I mean, I like, I like the setup, right? I feel like it was just perfectly kind of executed. I mean, we had the continuation from episode 11 with Phoebe's storyline and her continuing, and it was a nice, the, the stories combined at the end in a very cool and kind of natural way. But I really like just the idea of having this showdown game between the friends. I mean, first of all, it's kind of a cool, fun topic to be like, who knows each other better in the friend group, right? Sometimes there's those celebrity interviews where they're like interviewing like how well do you know your castmates and those can be a lot of fun. But especially with your friends, I feel like that's even more fun and more interesting. And just the different categories, the different questions, I liked how that went around. Just the whole scenario and execution was very entertaining and they kept like upping the stakes, you know, not just in the literal stakes of what they were betting, but like mixing it up to engage the audience. So that premise never overstated it's welcome. So just really, really strong writing in that sense. And then it was really cool because the money was already, you know, that's some stakes, but for a TV show, it was so much, it was a great call by the writers to up the stakes to something beyond just money, you know, to something like 
you get rid of your animals or you lose the apartment. And I mean, I would not have bet the apartment. That is just me because that is I – mean, or the pets. I mean, if someone was like, put your dogs on the line, like, no way. But that's just me. But it was – I like that they did that for the sake of the show because it did make for kind of a tense final scene. I genuinely didn't know who was going to win. Part of me was kind of thinking that Rachel and Monica was going to win. I wish I had placed bets, honestly, during the reaction, but I just didn't think to do that while I was watching. But hey. Rachel and Monica lost and I kind of like how they followed through right because you know like if you if you make the bet you know I mean the others the winners can forgive the debt but at the end of the day I feel like you have to honor the agreement if you're making a bet even if it's with friends and it and also just for the sake of mixing things up on the show it's kind of interesting that we have a change for the characters, right? I mean, they had a funny closing bit at the end with seeing the the contrasting reactions between Joey and Chandler getting their upgrade in a living space and Monica and Rachel. And, oh, can I just say, like, Monica had some amazing screams. Just, just seeing her outbursts of disbelief and anger and frustration, frustration at losing, that was very, very amusing. Some great acting, just very funny. And moving forward, it'll kind of be cool to see that change, right? Like Mana, I, 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 I could see, I feel like there could be a lot of different things and mix-ups and anger and frustration, just amusing, crazy scenarios with Rachel and Monica now living in Chandler and Joey's old place and vice versa. I mean, what are Chandler and Joey going to make the nice apartment a mess in the matter of two weeks? That's definitely a distinct possibility, right? I also like how Ross, his role in the whole game was so good too. He was so into it. Like he loved every moment of it. And I personally love that. Like you always need that person. You're having like a game night or a group night with friends or just any of those type of activities. It's great when someone can kind of host the event and especially when they host it but they put some care and effort into it it makes it more fun makes it more official i feel like that you know shouldn't be overlooked how ross really contributed in that episode and then of course like i mentioned earlier like it all tied together uh, you know, crossed over with Phoebe's storyline in a nice, really nice way. You know, it was exciting that Phoebe was pregnant. She's so happy. You know, her brother's so happy. Your brother's wife is so happy. And and similar to, it reminded me of, I believe it's in episode one. Not in episode one. I believe it's in season one when Ross, uh, they're debating the baby names with Ross, Susan, and Carol. And they're all having a fight. And then we hear the thump thump of the baby's heart and that like brings them together. This moment was a little bit reminiscent of that same moment where the celebration, the joy that Phoebe had kind of made everyone stop in their shouting and fighting and anger and just drop that all for a second and celebrate for Phoebe. And I just, I love that. Like that sums up so much of what's great about the dynamic of the characters and friends is that they bicker, they fight, they have their, their differences. But when something serious in one of their lives is actually going on, they all can like realize that's what truly matters. I mean, that's what real friendship is all about, right? But had a great time with both those episodes. I hope you enjoyed those reactions. As always, if you want to support the channel, the full unedited reactions are on Patreon, along with future reactions if you don't want to wait. Thank you to everyone for watching. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero.